everyone, it's Meg, and today I wanted to do um, another chat video, but this time I wanted to do one for tips on starting and growing your K-pop collection. So just things that I've learned over the course of the last two years of heavily, purposefully growing my collections, starting collections for new groups and different things like that. Also, I figured it would be an easy video to get me back in the swing of things because I've been a little anxious lately. <laughs> so I figured this this video would be um, easier for me to do. So I'm um, just giving little tips and things that I've found have really helped me in starting collections for groups and artists and growing my collections for other groups and artists. But if you have anything that you use to grow your collection or any tips or things that help you to grow your collection please let me know i love to see how other people's collections grow and it just makes me so happy so i wrote down some little talking points because i'm gonna forget <laughs> if i do stream of consciousness so um i would say my first tip would be to define your ultimate artists and groups um for me that really helps me to figure out what are the groups or who are the artists that I really want to purposefully collect for? So when I was first able to really start collecting for groups, I knew that I wanted to collect for Shiny because I had Sherlock just sitting there. <laughs> Since like 2012, I had Sherlock just sitting on my shelf and I'm like, I need, I need more. I need more Shiny. So I knew Shiny was priority, BTS was priority, Oh My Girl was priority, Girls' Generation was priority for me. Um, to start working on growing those specific collections. Um, and then once I kind of got a foothold on that and once I got a little more disposable income, <laughs> then I was able to you know, go, hey, I wanna continue growing my Twice collection and then so on and so on. So I would say the first thing to really think about is who are you wanting to collect for the most? Because there is a lot of amazing and wonderful K-pop groups and artists out there. A lot of groups that make amazing, amazing music. But it's very hard to collect for a lot of different people, especially if you're planning on thoroughly collecting for a lot of different people. It's, it's, it's kind of overwhelming sometimes if you collect for like I don't know more than 10 <laughs> groups and 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 the way that I mean like buying all the versions of an album like even collecting for one group where you buy all the versions can be very very hard sometimes <laughs> so I would say definitely think about who your ultimates are definitely think about who are the groups that you really want to center your collection around and that'll help you um moving forward when you're thinking about how you want to collect for them and then if you're able to collect for other other groups so I say that's the first thing and then my second tip would be to determine what you do and what you don't want to collect so for me until Jungwoo <laughs> until Jungwoo because Jungwoo changed everything for me um until Jungwoo I did not collect photo cards purposely um whatever I pulled in an album is what I I had. I didn't trade anything. I didn't buy anything. If I got a used album, sometimes I would buy a photo card to go along with the album just to have one, but it wasn't really necessary for me. It still isn't. I'm happy with whatever I pull, and aside from Jungwoo, I don't purposefully collect for any specific member. So when I was deciding on growing my collection, what I told myself at the time <laughs> was that I was not going to collect photo cards because that's a slippery slope. When you start collecting photo cards, then you just start collecting postcards and A4 photos and you buy stickers and all this stuff and, and you do. I bought a Jungwoo puzzle because it came with inclusions and have I put the Jungwoo puzzle together yet no because I'm very impatient and it's a thousand pieces and I put together maybe 15 of those pieces and then I got angry <laughs> so I stopped um yeah so I I break my own rules but when I first started growing my collection I told myself no photo cards and you know for the most part, outside of, listen, I Taemin is another, Taemin and Shiny, sometimes I buy things that are, don't come with things, but I, I can't help myself. But for the most part, I've stuck to that no buying photo cards rule, except for Jungwoo because I collect him, and except for Shiny and Taemin because I, I just, I can't, I can't help myself. So, um, that's what I told myself when I started collecting. That I would not do photo cards. I also told myself that I would not do merch. And by merch, I mean 
like shirts or umbrellas, um, <laughs> shoes, headbands, jewelry, and, and for the most part I've done pretty good on that. I do make exceptions for tours, but even then I don't really buy merch for BTS's tour. I only bought the program book. That's really the only thing that I want from a tour is the program book. I don't buy shirts. I don't buy headbands. I don't buy like stuffed animals like the BT21. I have a a um a, co a cookie pen and a cookie magnet, I think, but that's it. That's all I have because it was like four dollars and it was cute, but <laughs> that's really all I have. And I told myself I was going to limit myself to not buy merch because it's a lot of money. And if you collect for SM groups now, SM is doing this thing where if you buy a shirt, you get a random photo tag for for whichever member is in that group you get a random photo tag and the idea is like the photo tag is a photo card but you have to buy the $33 shirt to get the random photo tag and it's just I know <laughs> I, I love Jungwoo very much but no I'm not I'm, I'm not gonna buy a $33 shirt to get a random photo tag that's I can't I can't do I can't do that um mostly because I told myself when I first started collecting that I wanted to collect albums. I want the bulk of my collection to be albums because that's what I collect for Western artists. I love the music. I want to support the music. I don't want to not have money to buy albums because I'm buying all these other things. So I made my priority for my collection albums. In some instances, you know, DVDs, like for BTS, I'll buy DVDs. For Shiny, I buy Kinos. For for NCT, um, I kind of buy a little bit of everything because Jungwoo <laughs> and because NCT is so great. Uh, but for the most part, I stick to that with with a couple of exceptions here and there but for the most part I don't buy merch and I told myself I wouldn't buy merch not because it's not cute because it all is it's very cute but I just I want to make sure that I'm growing my collection in a way that helps me not spend all my money <laughs> and also keeps me targeted towards being able to buy the albums that I really really want so definitely would say to figure out what you do and don't want to collect but don't be afraid to make an exception every now and then it's not a bad thing if you do decide down the road hey i said i didn't want to buy merch but this shirt is cute like you don't have to hold yourself to a rigid standard it's not important you can get the shirt if it's cute just get the shirt it's it's yes <laughs> so next topic i think or next tip would be to find out if your favorite artists or groups albums go out of print and yeah I think that's really important because uh let's talk about EXID because <laughs> I think EXID is the perfect example I don't have their albums here like in this physical picture but yeah EXID's albums go out of print so fast um yeah they go out of print really fast and if you're get if you were getting into EXID like post street era street went out of print oh yeah went out of print eclipse full moon like it's just bam 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 out of print so I would say when you're first getting into a group and you want to collect for them try to figure out if any of those albums go out of print because if they do or if the artist is known to go out of print I would say to start with the earliest album you can find first because <laughs> I, I, I love EXID and it was very hard to find all oh, yeah very 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 hard and I bought it for $16 very reasonable price but it was very hard to find that album because all of EXID's albums go out of print eventually so I would say that's very important. You know, if you love a, a group like, say you have your, your shiny, for the most part, you can find at least one version of each of their Korean releases out there in the universe somewhere pretty easily. This one is special. <laughs> this is out of print. Um, but for, for a group like EXID or for other groups, it's really hard to find their albums because they've gone out of print. And it's really sad. And if you are in orbit and you love Luna before this last reprint, oh, the Luna Marketplace was very expensive because all of Luna's albums 
are out of print. <laughs> so if you're starting a new collection for a group, do a little research and try to figure out if their albums do go out of print. And if they do, get the older albums first. So that way, if you are trying to build a base of completing an album collection, you'll have an easier chance of doing that at a reasonable price. Because people will just price things so high to make a profit. It's just, it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> like, before the last Luna reprint, people were selling solos for $60 to $80 with or without photo card. It was, it was, it was just too much. <laughs> but yeah, I would say definitely try to see if the albums go out of print and if they do to buy the earliest albums first to try to make sure that you can get those older albums at a reasonable price so you don't end up having to pay an exorbitant amount on the secondary market. I would say my next tip would be to buy used or secondhand. So <laughs> these two albums, well these three things actually, um, I guess technically since this is a signed Pro Bowl album it would count because it didn't come from my hand, but I guess all of these things are all secondhand and I love buying used albums. It's so great. I bought this used, I bought this used, this used, this is a Pro Bowl album but it wasn't addressed to me so <laughs> technically I bought that used. And it's really great if you're looking to complete an album collection and you don't care if it comes with a photo card and you want to save some money because people will sell albums for really cheap with no photo cards a lot of the time because people apply for fan signs and they buy albums in bulk. They buy sometimes hundreds and hundreds of albums like if people are applying for a BTS fan sign or they're applying for Luna fan sign or Eyes One or NCT or EXO they'll buy all these albums in bulk they'll do group orders for these albums they'll buy extra albums to try to get an additional chance to get into the fan sign and then they're left with all these albums <laughs> and sometimes there's a lot of albums that go unsold so they'll sell the album sometimes with inclusions for cheaper because they just want to recoup some of the cost but a lot of the times you can find an album with no photo cards I've seen them go for like six dollars online and that's that's honestly that's a great price to me like if you don't care if it comes with a photo card if you don't care that it's not in the plastic that it's not new I would say definitely buy used or buy secondhand, especially especially if you are trying to collect a lot of albums at once. For me, a lot of my albums that I bought are used um, from Mercari, from all these different places, from Facebook, from Twitter. I just... I was really trying to focus a lot of, on second gen because I wanted to get a lot of my second gen albums. I'm not, I'm not all the way there, <laughs> but I'm working on it. But a lot of these second gen albums are very hard to find now. And I wanted to get all of these things put together. I was working on my four minute collection for so long. And it was so, so just, oh my God, it was, it was really, <laughs> it was, it was, it was hard, but I would definitely say if you don't mind if it comes without a photo card or if you don't mind that it's not quote unquote brand new, definitely buy used. I, I think it's great. <laughs> a lot of the times you will get it for a far cheaper price because the seller is basically selling it to you. They've already opened it. They've taken things out or maybe it doesn't come with things. Like if you're buying one of Shiny's first albums, there's no photo cards for that. Or if you're buying some of Four Minutes albums, some of them don't have photo cards either. So for those things, there's no inclusions. But especially if they're older albums, a lot of times sellers will sell those for really, really cheap as well. So definitely, definitely recommend used if you're comfortable with that. I, I loved buying secondhand because I got, I got this stuff for really, really good prices. I got oh my god 10 11 12 i don't remember how many girls generation japanese albums and they were sold in a whole bundle on mercari japan for like 20 dollars. it was the best moment of my life it was amazing so yes definitely recommend buying used and use proxy sites and twitter and facebook to help you save money on that like i was saying those sellers who you know apply for fan signs or are buying in bulk for a purpose are looking to sell their albums afterwards to try to you know make up some of the amount of money that they've spent because especially if you're buying for fan signs for, for a lot of groups that's no joke you have to buy a lot of albums to get into a fan sign for a lot of groups so 
definitely recommend that you check out Twitter and Facebook for sellers. Of course, be wary. There are scammers. Make sure you ask for proof. Of course, make sure that you do that. But I've had a really good experience, like, with Mercari Japan, through Bai, through Japonica, through Nokio. I've had good experiences on Twitter, especially with NCT sellers, as that's mainly what I buy for Jungwoo. And then Facebook I have bought from now and again, and I've had good experiences with that as well. So yes, definitely recommend that. And if you're starting a new collection for a group and you're not super familiar with the kind of way or the amount that things should go for i would definitely recommend that you ask what the reasonable prices are because people are just <sighs> and and i'm gonna use this as an example bts people will take a bts album this 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 is wings <laughs> is this side i just have it here because i like looking at it but they'll take a bts album they'll take out the photo card Okay, and let's let's say let's say this album's twenty dollars, right? Let's just say Wings is twenty dollars. So you buy a BTS album for twenty dollars. They'll take out the photo card, they'll put it on Mercari app, and they'll list that photo card for twenty dollars with no album. <laughs> and and I feel badly because the idea that someone is going to log into that app, see that price, and think, oh my goodness, it's a Jungkook photo card. That's a great price. I need to buy that please don't <laughs> please don't do that please please don't don't spend the amount of money you would spend to get the album with the photo card on just the photo card it's it's don't don't do that <laughs> please please don't i promise even for older albums people will trade with you people will trade with you you can sell that photo card for for i would say a fair price would be seven or eight dollars definitely half or less than half of what the album cost if you're not selling the album with it and then you can use that money to buy the photo card you want if you want to do that but please do not let people make you think that spending twenty dollars on an album photo card that is in print <laughs> from an album that's in print is please please don't buy from them please don't buy from them that's just no please don't do that please don't especially if you're buying like for an album that you can buy at a target or walmart please please don't please 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 don't i promise you someone will trade with you <laughs> someone will trade with you please do not please do not and it just it makes me sad because people will charge a premium just because they pulled the card and it's 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 not fair I, I, in my opinion that that's not fair so definitely do some research on to what the fair market value for things are within the fandom of the group that you're looking to collect because yeah I wouldn't want anyone to pay a lot a lot of money and think they're getting a great deal only to find out later that they weren't getting a great deal um and it's it's taken me a lot of trial and error to figure out what a good deal is for each of the different groups that i collect for for albums and things like that so definitely recommend that you do that and don't feel pressure to collect too fast i felt that pressure when I started collecting because I hadn't been able to collect for years and years and years so I was like okay I have to buy all these albums because I didn't get to buy all these albums before so I need to buy all these albums I'm gonna buy six albums and then I'm gonna buy eight more albums and then I'm gonna buy six more albums and then I'm gonna buy eight more albums and it's it was a lot of money <laughs> it was a lot of money and it's it's very fun to open up a lot of albums I've done I've done some hauls where I open up a lot of albums at one time but that's not my usual thing because the bills and groceries <laughs> and health stuff so I don't get to do like the six to eight album hauls very often when I do they're usually used albums from Mercari that I got for like $20 as like grouped or $30 grouped together so I'm not paying like full price for them but yeah don't feel pressure to collect completely for groups super super fast especially if they're a group whose albums are in print like let's 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 take twice like twice all their albums are in print you're gonna have a hard time finding twice coaster the christmas version 
you'll have a hard time finding that. <laughs> um, that one's a little harder to find. Not impossible. Not impossible. It's even possible to find it with photo cards, but you're going to pay a little bit more. But other than that, and yeah, other than that, their Korean releases, the mainline Korean releases, you can still find. So, and there's a lot of them. Um, especially, so if the group that you're looking to collect for, they have stuff that's in print. I, I love opening albums, I love buying albums, but there there's no rush. <laughs> there's no rush, and I had to tell myself that, you know, there's no rush to have a complete collection tomorrow. <laughs> um, I don't want to get to a place where I am in a bad financial place because I'm buying albums. I don't want to get to a place where I'm in debt because I'm buying albums. You know, even though it's a lot of fun and I love doing it and I love collecting and it makes me so happy, I don't want to ever get to a place where buying albums is putting me in a bad place because this is fun and this is my happiness and this is my joy. I don't want it to be something that gives me, you know, burden. So definitely recommend to take your time um, to go as fast as you feel comfortable going or as slow as you feel comfortable going whatever speed that you feel comfortable at is great if you have a group and you're able to buy all their albums at one time that is super awesome but if you have a group and you're only able to get one album and they have like 20 albums just don't don't feel bad <laughs> don't feel badly about that we're all able to collect at different speeds and at different times and i mean i love girls generation i still don't have all of their albums and I, I do kind of feel bad about that because I love them a lot and they were the first K-pop girl group I ever fell in love with. But they just have a lot of albums and there's just a lot of albums being released all the time. So I kind of have to prioritize, okay, I know that I'm going to be able to find these older GG albums. So I'm going to put that off until there's a lull. And when there's a lull in my spending where there's no comebacks and no personal things going on and stuff like that, then maybe I can get there. I haven't gotten there yet, <laughs> but that is the plan. So don't feel pressured to spend and collect too fast. Um, but don't feel guilty either if you're able to get, you know, a lot of albums. It's it's wonderful to be able to get all of that stuff, and, and it's it's really, really great. But don't feel badly if you're not able to buy all of them at once, because for the most part, a lot of these groups, their albums still are in print. And if you ever have a hard time finding an album, just contact me, let me know. I'll try to help you if I can. There's some albums that are just really hard to find. Like if you're looking for EXID's Hippity Hop, I cannot help you because <laughs> I, I can't find that album for less than like $300 myself. But for for a lot of other things, there are, there are places to look. So if you're looking for specific albums and you ever need help, you can always ask me. But yeah, don't, don't feel bad about not being able to collect super super fast and don't feel that pressure that you have to collect fast because a lot of these albums will will be here later like girls generation i can still get pretty much on on the second hand market most of their albums for face value or less and they're like 10 year old albums nine year old albums eight year old albums so yes just the pressure is kind of there as a collector, but but try not to let the pressure overwhelm you. Um, and don't feel bad. Now I would say this is my last tip for when you're collecting or wanting to collect or starting or growing a collection. Don't feel badly and don't feel guilty if you can't buy something right away or if you can't buy something at all. Um, these things are expensive. So, I mean, like, individually, if you have $15 or $20 and you have this album, you're like, oh, I'm just going to buy this album. It's only $20. But if you collect for seven different groups and you collect photo cards, and if one group has four versions and then three weeks later your other group comes back and they have three versions, that's seven albums times 20. And then if you're collecting photo cards, you have to trade. And then you have to buy stamps for trading if you don't have them. And it, it adds up. <laughs> There, there's a there's a cost so I would say try not to feel badly if you're not able to get something right away or if you're not able to get something at all there are lots of things that I just don't buy because I can't <laughs> um there's a lot of older BTS stuff that I will just never have because I'm not willing to pay 
what the market values it at. You know, there are things that are sold for $150, $200, and when I have $150 to $200, it usually has to go to something else <laughs> a lot of the time. And, and yeah, so I would say try not to feel guilty if you're not able to get things. And I know it's, it's hard because, I mean, I see things and I'm like, oh my god, I wish I had that. Like, for this, it took me so long to get this, and I just stumbled upon this, like... It was it was just the craziest thing. I didn't even ever think I was going to get this. But for the longest time, I was like, oh man, I wish I had that. I wish I had that so bad. <laughs> and yeah, there's, there's those times you're going to be like, oh my god, I wish I had this album. I wish I had that DVD. I wish I could buy this right now. I wish I could get that because it comes with this cute photo card. Like, there's always those emotions. And they're completely valid because, I mean, we all want things, especially when they're cute. <laughs> and especially when they're from groups that we love. But try not to feel too badly if you're not able to get it right away. Because there will always be someone that's willing to sell it. And if you're looking for something specifically, again, you can always ask me and I can try to help you find it for a good price. Because, yeah, there's lots of people that sell things for a lot of crazy prices <laughs> out there. So... Yeah, I would say those are my tips and whatnot for starting and growing your collections. I have a lot of albums, a lot more than I ever, ever thought I would have. I have like almost two bookshelves worth of albums. And if you would have asked me at all, ever, if I thought I would have that many, probably not. But then I look over at my other bookshelf that has all my other CDs, I realize how many Western CDs I have and it makes sense because I just love collecting music. But it's expensive. It's a very expensive thing and it's a very expensive hobby. So yeah, that's what I would recommend if you're looking to collect for a group or an artist. But if you have started a collection or you're looking to collect for a new group, let me know how you collect. Let me know if you have any tips or tricks or pros or anything about collecting. Um, but those are just the things that I would say that I've learned. And yeah, so thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye!